Hi everyone, this is Cyclops Dragon from CSC, and this is going to be a quick tutorial on how to properly tempo map a chart for Clone Hero. But before I get started, I'd like to note that while I'm using Moonscraper in this tutorial, I'll also be covering the same concepts in EOF, but I won't be covering any other programs. If you're using another program to chart like Reaper, you will probably be able to transfer the ideas I'm covering to that program, but you'll have to do a little bit of figuring out to make sure you understand what everything is. If you're using feedback, then I recommend that you seek professional help, or at least a Moonscraper download. Now, to start out, in Moonscraper, this box on the left here contains the two relevant markers for tempo mapping. BPM markers, or tempo markers, which basically give you the number of beats per minute, and time signature markers, which tell you the number of beats in a measure. In EOF, basically everything will be happening in the beat menu. You can select a beat and then choose beat and BPM for BPM markers, or beat and time signature for time signature markers. If you followed our first tutorial, you should have all your audio prepared. But if you haven't, feel free to go back and watch that first, because that's a very important thing to be doing. It's important that you use the normal audio for tempo mapping, not the center cancelled audio or the center isolated audio, because those two have parts missing that'll make tempo mapping more difficult, so you just want to have the entirety of the audio file in the audio that you're using to tempo map. So the first thing you want to do is sync the start of the song. Often this is going to fall on the first beat of the song, but that's not always going to be the case, and you'll have to identify where it falls in those cases. It isn't on the first beat, it's actually on beat 4, like this. So that drum hit is beat 1. In Moonscraper, when you're placing global events like BPM markers, you should be able to see the waveform of the song. And even when you're in local event mode, you can place the waveform on it using the waveform menu. In EOF, the waveform can be toggled with F5, and it can also be customized in the menu. You should also have the metronome on while tempo mapping, because things aren't always super clear while you're tempo mapping. Both EOF and Moonscraper use M as the metronome key and that will just click whenever you cross over one of the beat lines. Now, I already know that this song's BPM averages out at around 92 because I used Moonscraper's built-in BPM tapping tool to get the BPM. And when I prepared my audio, I just generated an amount of silence so that the first note would line up if I just put in 92 BPM. So I'm going to start out by putting in 92 BPM and see where that gets me. I'm linking a similar BPM tapping tool in the description for the people who don't use Moonscraper. So just looking at this waveform right here, you can see there's a little spike right here. This is what we call the attack of the note, which is basically where the note starts. And you can sort of tell that it's a tiny bit off the beat line, but if we go up here to where the first drum hit is, this is basically perfectly synced. Now a lot of charters would consider this to be acceptable error, but even if you don't, you can adjust it now or later. To adjust a tempo marker, the first thing you want to do is place another tempo marker after it. I usually recommend that you start by placing tempo markers on the first beat of each measure, and then you can go back and add or remove more if it's not necessary if it's necessary or not necessary. So in Moonscraper, if you hold control and then right-click and drag a tempo marker, you can move that beat around by adjusting the BPM of the previous tempo marker down here. Now this is far and away the mo fastest and most accurate way to tempo map. It gives you easy precision and very fast precision. In EOF, all you need to do is click and drag the tempo marker to achieve the same effect. Note that if you drag a tempo marker in EOF, it'll automatically anchor it, and you can unanchor it by selecting it and pressing A. Now, when you're tempo mapping, 99% of the time you should be tempo mapping to the drums. The function of the drums is to keep the beat of the song, and the kick and snare drums will often have very distinct shapes on the waveform that you can easily distinguish. Like right here, this is a snare, and this is a kick. It's not so much the a particular shape for each that you're looking for, it's more the fact that they're very distinct spikes. So you can see I'm syncing that to the beginning of this spike, and that syncs up very well. Now, in situations where you don't have drums, you should be tempo mapping to an instrument that's playing a more rhythmic part if you have that one that's available. And if you don't have any rhythmic instrument available, like a rhythm guitar or something, you should tempo map to the instrument you're charting only as a last resort. 
It's also worth noting that not every song is going to have a really nice waveform to work with, like this one, and some songs are going to make it very difficult to distinguish beats using the waveform. This is going to be more common in songs that don't have a very large dynamic range and are just sort of loud all the way through. You can also tempo map by ear using the metronome or by using the clap function of your chart editor. Uh, in Moonscraper, you can toggle clap by pressing N. It doesn't really give you a nice pop-up like metronome does, but you can hear it claps there. And you can toggle the clap in EOF by pressing C. The clap will just click every single time a note is going by the strike line. So another thing that's important to note is that you don't need to be extremely perfectly precise with every single tempo mapping the natural fluctuations in a tempo of a musician's playing. Not every single beat needs to line up perfectly before, perfectly with the audio. Like I said, there is a certain degree of acceptable error that really isn't perceptible by the player while they're playing or even while they're practicing. I recommended that you start by placing a tempo marker at the start of every measure and then sync all those up. And then you can add or remove more tempo markers as necessary. In a slower song like this, you may find yourself needing two tempo markers every measure, or two tempo markers in a single measure. But unless the mid-measure tempo fluctuations are highly noticeable to a listener, you should try to have avoid having them be noticeable in the chart. Unless it's extremely obvious in listening, the player shouldn't really be able to see the BPM and changing every beat. The main exception to this is sections that are performed in free time, like, say, a single instrument solo that doesn't have any drums or any other instruments behind it, that's sort of like not really paying attention to tempo and is just being performed in free time. If those don't have a tempo, you can sort of like drag more precisely, and that's another place where using the click can be very helpful because you can sync up the individual notes or sync up much more precisely than just using the metronome. Now, the next thing I want to touch on is time signatures. A time signature tells you how many beats are in a measure and what note snap is a full beat. For example, this time signature 4-4 four, four, tells you that there are four beats in a measure and the quarter note or the 1-4 snap gets one beat in the measure. Now, many songs that you're going to be working with are going to be in either 3-4 or 4-4. Four, four. Most are in 4-4 four, four, and then a good deal of the others are in 3-4. So most of the time you're not going to worry about time signatures very much, but even without that there are a couple of things you should know. First of all, absolutely never should you start this chart by syncing it with a time signature or placing a time signature in the middle of a beat. Moonscraper will let you place a time signature marker wherever you want, and it'll start a new measure in Moonscraper, but this isn't supported by Clone Hero. Clone Hero defines beats and measures differently than Moonscraper does, and the only way to get Clone Hero to properly detect a, a time signature change is to place it directly on the first beat of a measure. And this applies everywhere in the chart, not just at the start of the chart. You should only ever place time signature markers on these thick white beat lines. These ones, no, not the thin ones, only these thick ones. Now, if you're not musically trained or musically knowledgeable, figuring out time signatures can be pretty difficult. It can end up being a bit of a trial and error process, especially on a song like a complicated progressive metal song or progressive rock song with really complicated time signatures. And this is one of the few situations where I personally would recommend using sheet music or a tab because they can be a very good starting point for determining time signatures. Oftentimes they're written by people with at least some musical training and you can glean some time signatures from them. One thing that I should also note is that while not all songs are going to be recorded to a metronome, you will probably encounter some that are. You'll probably be able to identify those songs just by placing the first BPM marker and then scrolling through and watching all the beats sync up. If everything syncs up pretty much perfectly, you really don't need to add more BPM markers, even if some beats fall a tiny bit off. But if it seems like the artist recorded to a metronome, but the beats still drift on and off, you should still be tempo mac normally. I also want to give a special mention to some songs that have a particular kind of beat where the drummer sometimes will put emphasis on the eighth note before the downbeat and then skip the downbeat. You may have heard this on songs like Megadeth's Tornado of Souls, Black Tide's Shockwave, or really most Black Tide songs. We've, in the charting community, we've affectionately dubbed this type of beat the Black Tide beat. 
Or in this song that I've charted, which is Open Your Heart by Crush 40. This happens in the chorus of Open Your Heart, like this. So you can hear that the emphasis is put on this beat here instead of on the downbeat. And the downbeat is completely skipped. But what you can see here is that I've centered the uh, BPM marker on the downbeat and then synced the two surrounding hits to land properly on the BPM markers, or rather on the uh, eighth beats. And then I've done the same thing throughout the song whenever these hits happen. So the reason that I do this is because if anyone were to ever want to convert this chart to MIDI, and they open it in EOF, EOF doesn't support offbeat tempo markers. So that's why you should still be tempo mapping on the beat, but syncing the upbeat so that everything lines up properly. These principles should give you basically everything you need to know to make serviceable tempo maps for your charts. And if you have any questions, you can feel free to put them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. Thank you all and have a great day.